guys, it's Tuesday again. I swear the weeks are going by so quickly at the moment, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to start with the questions. Rachel, do you have any other POTS friends outside of YouTube? Um, like I said in one of my old videos that I have a Facebook account under my middle name which was made purely for POTS and I've spoken to lots of people on there with POTS who through all the Facebook groups that are there and stuff and do you sleep with a fan on? No, I don't. Millie, <clears throat> what is your favourite childhood memory? I don't have a favourite. Um, before I got ill, I did so much and I loved doing everything, so I really can't pick a favourite. And you're saying um, how you were going to start maybe taking Prozac, and that is the medicine that I'm on. Um, I'm on a really tiny dose, uh, and I take it in the liquid solution rather than pills. I take 20 milligrams per 5 ml and I only take 1.5 ml in the morning when I wake up and it's not for depression because I've never been depressed it's you know supposed to pump up your blood vessels or whatever and I've been on it for I don't know like a year or something since I got diagnosed. Caroline, um, what do you use to make videos? I use iMovie too but I've never had the problem of only being able to upload 10 minute videos so and you asked me how does my sloped bed help me well it's something we did last year as soon as I was diagnosed with POTS um, we don't know if it does anything but it's it doesn't have any bad side effects like some medicines would have so you know it's worth a try I'd re probably recommend it because it's meant to keep the blood flowing to your feet whilst you're asleep so it makes it easier for the next morning when you stand out of bed you're less dizzy, you don't have so much blood pulling so yeah, I mean, just give it a go anything's worth a try, right? and you were saying about the super moon and oh my goodness I, I was writing to all the UK potsies um, about the moon saying I think I can see a full moon coming I wonder what our symptoms will be like because I've been saying that I think my symptoms are moon related <laughs> because um, we've been researching into this if our bodies are made up of like 70% water or something like that and the moon controls the tides of the sea and gives you high tides and low tides so if it can control the sea what can it do to our body's circulation and things? So, I mean, I'll tell you how I was with the supermoon when I get onto my week. And Emily, I only just watched your video like half an hour ago because, you know, I just woke up and I logged on and it was there. And um, I'm sorry to see that you're like not good, but um, do you say you got accepted into like a university? Is that not amazing? Congratulations! That's, that's really good. I'm so happy for you. But I hope you feel better this week. And next week you can make a video, like a full video. But you asked, what is your personality like? Okay, so I thought, oh my goodness, Emily's gone crazy when she was talking about all the ENFs. I thought, oh my goodness. Anyway, I clicked on the links and... Oh wait, I saved it. I saved the results. Where are they? Um, the one of the tests says your type is ENFJ. And the other test, um, I came back and it gives you all the percentages of all the different types and all mine are basically <laughs> around the same percentage. So there's no like one leaping out in front of the other. I mean, the two top ones I've got is type 1 and type 6, but then the rest are all quite similar. So I'm going to move on to my week. <clears throat> I'm like, I don't know why, but today I'm really choked up, so apologies for me going <clears throat> the whole time. But Thursday I had my um, follow-up hospital appointment with my specialist who I was meant to see last time, but who was on holiday. Anyway, um, I went to the hospital and 
I wasn't great in the hospital, I just did not feel good and I was quite glad that I didn't feel good though when I was there because it meant that the doctor got to see me when I wasn't feeling good. Firstly we had to wait for like an hour, two hours in the waiting room, it was so annoying. Uh, anyway, we got in and I was like, yes you're not on holiday, anyway. Um, we, the three of us just talked non-stop and I swear, the, because I say with POTS, there's not one symptom it doesn't give you at times. I mean, there's times where I'll have moments where I'll say, name one symptom I don't have right now. I've got headaches, I feel like I'm going to throw up, I feel like I'm about to fall to the ground, I've got sore knees. I mean, everything that could possibly be wrong, I feel this wrong sometimes. So this doctor just has to hear all this, and it's quite quite funny just because he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, right, okay. Anyway, he's just basically checking me out for anything else I could have, just double checking that we're not missing anything um, other than pots. Basically, the urine tests I've done twice, because I had to repeat it a second time because the first time got lost, I now have to repeat a third time because it showed up that I had paracetamol in my urine and I was like, well yeah, I take paracetamol for like headaches and things and they were like, oh but it could be indicative that you have something else wrong and I was like, but I took some that day and they're like, oh, well we'll have to repeat to make sure. And then my blood tests came back again and I said, so have you told me this result and that result? And they're like, oh sorry, we forgot to check for that. You'll have to come back next week and get more blood tests. And I was like, well, what were you checking for, you know? Anyway, um, the only things that came back with them is I have low vitamin D levels. And the person says, it's not uncommon for people in Scotland in the winter to have low vitamin D levels because you don't see very much sun. <laughs> Anyway, I'm probably going to have to start taking, like, supplements for vitamin D. And then, also, I came back with a very slightly above average thyroid level, which um, is so, like, not high, but just on the borderline, I have to get that checked out again. But I've had it done so many times in the past, it's always been fine. Anyway, whilst I was there, my stomach was making this really strange noise, which I've been getting for months now, where it's this gurgle, and it starts in my stomach, and it goes, oh, and it comes out, and it gets to about to as far as my neck, and it basically sounds like a macaw, like I'm mooing, going, oh, and um, it's like air getting trapped in my windpipe or something we don't we don't know what it is at first we thought oh, this is computer sh at first we thought it was acid reflux but i've taken so many anti acids and it would never help um anyway it was making this noise when i was seeing my doctor and so he put me on you know the examining table and was got out his stethoscope listening to it and everything and has decided he wants me to have an MRI scan of my stomach and windpipe um, to basically check there's no blockages or um, he thinks maybe I might have a hernia or something if because the noise is so strange he's never heard it before but he says it sounds like air is getting trapped somewhere around here that it could be a hernia and I'm thinking to myself I doubt it's a hernia I think it's you know if it was a hernia I'd probably have more direct pain and I'm probably going to go for all these MRI scans and everything and it'll probably just be another waste of time but I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. I'm going to get these other tests as well from the hospital um, but, you know, I'll tell you about that once they're done <laughs> and if anything comes up with them. So that was my long hospital story. <laughs> and the rest of my week, um, basically on Friday, I went on a basically a day trip, um, a couple of hours in a van, in a car, and um, went to see my brother and we had to help him move loads of furniture and stuff from houses and 
I wasn't doing it, I just sat on a couch all day. But as soon as I got there, I tripped over, landed on my wrists and knees, and I've got massive bruises, and it put me into a straight away a POTS attack because, I don't know why it was, I, I tr fell over and I've got such a sensitive body that I get knocked somewhere and it will like put my heart rate up and then I'll feel all funny and you know. But anyway, I took a really bad POTS attack, the worst I've had in months, where my heart rate went over 200 again and I just felt ugh and it was really strange, it was out of the blue and and then it got a bit better again, uh, I took med some medicine to slow it down and then I just felt horrible and then it happened again when I was travelling back home on Friday night about midnight when we were in the car and I was with my brother and his wife and I took this really bad attack in his car and um, it's like a new car they have and I'm going I'm gonna throw up in your car and uh, it was so bad and I just felt like I was dying, no joke. It was just, the symptoms were horrible. And then we looked outside the window and it was like, boom, massive moon. And I was like, oh. And everybody in my family kept saying, Olivia, just remember, look outside, there's a full moon. This is probably all that's wrong with you right now. And yeah, so her attacks were horrible and I sedated myself to knock my heart rate down but um, I had recovered quite well by the next day so not too bad but yeah really interesting how a moon can kind of make you feel so bad I guess it just, yeah and then I took another bad POTS attack yesterday it's been a week of POTS attacks I'm not amused but um I think yesterday it was induced from the heat. So my question for the week is... For me, I can't shower um, because it turns my legs literally black and they look like snakeskin. They go all like funny pattern and mottled and, and it just makes me feel so ill. So I cannot have a shower like standing up in the shower I cannot do it and I find that having a bath um overheats me far too much and I just ugh, feel like I'm gonna faint in the bath and before I got ill you know as you can see I have quite long hair and I used to wash it like every other person normally in a shower or I would um we have a bath and I would lean over the bath and wash my hair with like an, a, the shower attachment but I can't do that anymore because um, leaning, bending forward makes me so dizzy I can't do that so how do I keep clean? I don't, oh my goodness I haven't had, I haven't washed in about three years I don't, I'm kidding <sighs> so basically what I do is I have a shallow bath where it's like I sit in a bath of about that much water and I use a shower attachment to like keep clean I suppose and um, it keeps me cool I put like really cold water on and I spray my face with cold water so it keeps me cool and but I, I cannot wash my hair myself um, which sucks to be 16 and unable to wash your own hair but luckily um, my mum has the patience to do it for me and I will sit in a chair. We have we have a sink for my dog to bath my dog and it's just designed for my dog bath and basically I sit in a chair and I lean backwards like a hairdresser's and my mum has an attachment where she'll wash my hair and dry it which you know I would obviously prefer to do it myself but I just can't <laughs> But it's good that I guess um, I have someone that is willing to do it for me. Or else I don't know how I'd survive. <laughs> so I was just wondering how you all cope with bath, showers and things. So yeah, let me know. And I hope that this week with the supermoon going away that we will have a much better week. And now that it's spring, the weather's getting better, the sun is out, there's no snow. So let's hope that spring, every day is a next day to recovery.